children in. Good. Everybody good? good? Yeah. Good. Go ahead, Commissioner. All right. Uh, good afternoon. I just want to recap quickly what happened here this morning. There was a report of a fire that came in at 1.41 a.m. at 14 Goodwin Place, which we're standing in front of. Units responded in under five minutes. There was incredibly heavy fire on arrival. Our members did an extraordinary job in very dangerous conditions, pushing in to rescue two civilians who were treated by EMS and taken to Wyckoff Hospital. Those civilians are one green tag patient and one red tag patient who remains in critical condition at this time. The cause of this fire was e-bikes and lithium ion batteries. Multiple devices were found on scene, and this is a critical safety issue both for New Yorkers and for our members. We are coming at this problem from all angles. We have an interagency task force, which the mayor has put together and asked all agencies to work together. We have passed critical legislation with the city council, and we are working with our federal partners at the Consumer Product Safety Commission to further regulate these devices. But we urge the public strongly to follow critical safety device when it comes, critical safety messages when it comes to these devices. Do not charge them when you are sleeping. Do not put them in the only means of exiting your apartment or your hallway. When these catch on fire, they burst into flames and there is almost no way out of your room or out of your apartment. We urge people to buy certified devices. We urge people not to tamper with the devices or the batteries. It's an incredibly dangerous issue that we are coming at from every angle to make sure that our members and the public are safe. I'm gonna hand it over to our Chief Fire Marshal to talk a little bit more about the investigation and what comes next. Uh, as the commissioner mentioned, uh, we, we did find several uh, batteries in there, approximately 50 inside. We believe that one of the occupants was repairing the batteries in the home. Uh, there were also many that were charging at the time that were, uh, nobody was watching them uh, charge, so they, they had charged them overnight. Uh, as mentioned, there is one critically injured patient that was unable to get out that was rescued by our firefighters. Uh, it, in a traditional fire, which, which develops rather slowly, uh, we believe that that victim would have been able to make their way out. There were working smoke detectors. There was working sprinklers inside. Uh, these fires, they when they do occur, they occur uh, so violently that uh, that it traps the occupants. Uh, they're unable to get out. Uh, if you do have these, as mentioned, don't charge them overnight. Don't charge them unattended. Uh, make sure they are not blocking your primary means of egress. Always have a second way out. Uh, don't repair them. If the battery is, is not working properly, replace it. Don't try to fix it. Uh, they, it's very difficult to manufacture these. And when you, when you do tamper with them, you know, we have incidents like this. Uh, this is our 24th fire related to these uh, batteries so far this year. Last year, we had uh, 220. Uh, it seems like the number is doubling over uh, year by year. Uh, last year, we had six fatalities related to, th to these uh, devices. This year so far, we've had one, and we're praying for the recovery of the victim from this morning. Stefan? You can essentially sort of describe what neighbors have been describing to us, which sounds like an illegal chop shop. Um, I guess the question then is, that's not illegal right now, so what can be done to prevent that kind of behavior operation? Who are you asking the question? We really are coming at this from every angle, and that's absolutely necessary here. Our partners in the Consumer Product Safety Commission, we have asked and they have answered a number of regulations that we think would help stem the supply of these devices and would make future devices safer. Our interagency task force is working on a number of ways to address, uh, as you mentioned, the the need for these devices and the regulation of them. But again, that's why we really urge the public in the interim to follow this device. These are very dangerous and they are, are very dangerous to the people who have them in their homes. And so we are coming at this from every angle. We believe we will create safer devices in the future, but in the interim, we really need people to treat these uh, as carefully uh, as they are, as they need to be because they are very dangerous. Okay, how many, one second, Raj, one second, follow up. So in that letter, you did um, mention legislation. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the legislation that you were asking for in the city at least to address this? So the city council just aged a number of bills. Some are about public education, some are about outreach, and one is specifically addressing the issue of aftermarket devices and uh, disallowing them. Gabby, one second, Roger, come here. Approximately 50 inside, yes. Uh, 
Uh, well, it only takes one, right, to, to fail. So having 50 inside the same location is tremendously dangerous. And, and not only that, but 50 batteries that were not functioning properly. So, so they're, they're set to fail. Uh, it, it's, it's a very dangerous situation. We've actually seen this several times throughout the city uh, where people are, have these makeshift uh, repair facilities in, in uh, private dwellings or apartment buildings. Uh, we want to urge people to not do that. Again, replace the battery if it's not working properly. Properly, Replace it with a UL certified battery or a battery that's produced by and uh, certified by a national testing laboratory. I'd just like to wait, say one thing. We have videos of what this looks like when these catch fire. I really urge um, we can provide them. I really urge that uh, you see them. When you see what happens, you will realize why this is so dangerous for the occupants inside and for our members going in to rescue them. There's a tremendous volume of fire uh, and is very dangerous. Roger. How many of the 50 batteries caught fire after the first one was uh, There was a very heavy volume of fire. Uh, it's, it's difficult to say how many actually caught fire. Uh, we recovered some that are still intact from a remote area of the fire. Uh, that obviously shows signs of uh, being worked on. Uh, it's impossible for us to say how many were actually involved. Just upon you saying these were all failed batteries? Uh, well, he was working on them, so uh, we believe that they had some issues uh, prior to the fire. Any criminality here with you know repairing these batteries and the uh, uh, we're, we're looking into it, but uh, nothing nothing apparent at this time. Just clarify, he wasn't working on them at the very moment. Yeah, I, he he was the occupant. Uh, was not home that was working on the batteries at the time, so they were not being worked on at the time. However, several were charging at the time of the fire. Just, just follow up on Roger's question. So, can you give us a ballpark of how many did catch on fire? Like, uh, due, due to the extent of the damage, it's it's difficult to say how, exactly how many. But it, it really it only takes one, and uh, one fails, and then uh, communicates to the others, and then they'll fail. Everybody okay? Thank you. One second. Sorry. One second. Lithium ion batteries, yes. Okay. Are we good? We'll close Thank down for the last eight. Okay, we're good. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You.